So what is Git? Now, if you're new to programming or if you joined a company recently, you might have heard about this term called as Git. And in fact, from the last three to 40 years, everyone is talking about this Git. What exactly it is and why people is using it and how can we use it? So I will try to answer all those questions in this particular video. So welcome back aliens. My name is Devin Reddy and let's get started. Now Git is created by Lena Storworld. You guessed it right, he's the same guy who has created Linux kernel. Now, why he created another, another technology called as Git? So what happens, you know, when you talk about Linux kernel, it's open source, right? And anyone can contribute. So if you are living in anywhere in the world, you can contribute to the Linux kernel. Now what you can do, you can, you can download the copy of Linux kernel, you can add your own features and you can submit it there. Again, you can, they will not accept your request by default, but you have to provide some new features. The important thing is you can be a contributor to Linux kernel. Okay, so in this world we have millions of programmers, right? If everyone is trying to work on one software, how they can manage it? Is it that easy to manage? No, it's damn difficult. Trust me, even if you have five people working in a project, it will be difficult for you to manage that project. So what he came up with a concept called as Git and in Git, it handles all those things of merging of different, I mean, merging of different source code from different people and maintaining versions. So those, those things are provided by Git. So let's try to understand how Git works and what is Git. Now, Git is actually a distributed version control system. Heavy words, right? So let's try to understand those words here. Now, what happens is we have a concept of SCM. Now, it's not only for Git, the concept is there from a long time. Now, I'm not talking about supply chain management here. Now, SCM has lots of full form. Now, this, the, the full form which we have to see here is called as software configuration management. Or you can also use one more full form there, which is called as source code management. Now, what happens, you know, let's, let's try to understand this. Let's say if you're working on a project, right? So if you are alone working on a project, now, at this point, you will write some code, right? And of course, when you get a requirement from someone, you don't get the exact requirement. What you get is the, what you say, a higher requirements. What you will do is you will try to make a product, a small product, which is also called as a minimum value product, which is MVP. Now, you will make a product which, is not, which will not have all the features. And then you thought, okay, this is working. You got your first, or what do you say, the first working software. After some, time you, after some days you felt, okay, let's have some more features. Now what you're doing, you're changing the same project and you're adding new features. Now, okay, now after adding your new features, you realize, you know, these new features don't, are not working properly. Now what you will do? You have to remove all the features, right? Or maybe you, when you, when you showed, showed this uh, product to your client, your client says, okay, we, these new features are not that good for us. So what you thought, okay, let's remove, the, let's remove all those features. So from the first product, you have added some new features and now you have removed the, pro removed the features. Now let's say after some time, your client says, hey, you know those features which you have showed on that day? That actually is awesome. Now we want those features as well. Now what you will do, you will again write the same code, right? Uh, but luckily if you have a backup, normally we use Dropbox for the backup, right? So what you will do, you will go to Dropbox, you will copy that code and you will paste it again. But don't you think you are doing lots of work? And that too, let's say you are done with that. After some days, you have added some more features. You have removed some features. And after doing all those things, you realize, you know, the last version was better. So what we normally do is to maintain all this version system, we have a concept of version control. Example, so let's say when you released your first product, that will be a snapshot version. After some time, you thought, okay, this is the final version which you're going for, so that will be 1.0. Then after some time, you will be saying 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. And let's say now you're working on 2.0. Now, what if you want the older project, which is 1.2? Is it possible? So what we normally do is on Dropbox or maybe in your hard drive, we will create multiple folders, right? Which will have the backup of your project. So you will name this folder like this. You will be having 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, then 2.0. Just imagine if you're, if you're, uh, you have to handle all these projects and you have to remember which project has which features, right? You have to create a file there, maybe a readme file or text file where you will write everything. So why you have to manage all those things? You have a powerful tool here or a system which will do it for you. And that is your version control systems. Okay, now we can use any version control system, right? We can use, uh, we can use subversion, we can use git. Then why we are using git when you have subversion? 
Uh, it's because earlier people used to work with centralized version systems and now we use distributed version systems. Okay, what it means? So if you talk about centralized one, you'll be having multiple computers or maybe you'll be having one computer and you'll be having one server. So all your versions will be stored on this server. So this is your machine, you know, your poor machine and this is the server. So what you will do every time you write a code here, and if you add new features, the previous version will be stored on, on this server, right? This is centralized system. Now, what's the drawback of this? So the drawback is you have a working copy that is perfectly fine, but the version are maintained here, right? What if this server, uh, what if the server fails? What if you lose all your data from the server? It may happen, right? We are living in a world of hackers and if anything is possible. Uh, what if you are traveling somewhere and you don't have an uh, internet connection? Maybe you are on a flight or maybe you are somewhere in a remote place where you don't have an internet connection. How can you get this? Uh, what, how can you get the repository? Uh, that's a new term, right? A repository is a place where you will have all your codes. Or you can imagine a folder on server, right? So if there's no network connection, there will be an issue. And there's a single point of failure. If, you, if this server fails, you will lose everything. So what if if you have multiple machines, normally what happens is if you're working for a company, every computer, every project data will be stored on one server. What if everyone can have their own copy, right? So we can create a copy of itself, so we can have our copy. So we'll be having a working copy and we will be having something called as a local repository. So this is your local repository. On the server, we'll be having a remote repository. Now the advantage you have is, even if your server fails, that's fine, you have a local copy, right? And you can mirror your local copy to the server next time if your server fails. Now this time what we are doing is, every machine or every developer has their own copy. So this is called as distributed. So we are distributing the repository. So every machine will have their own local repository. Now even if you're in flight, or maybe if you're in some remote place, if you don't have an internet connection, that's fine. You can work on your project and you can create different versions in your local repository. And when you get the internet connection, just push it on the server. That will be awesome, right? And that is your distributed version control system. So initially, people used to work with centralized and now, okay, now does, does that mean we should only use distributed, we should not use centralized? See, both have their merits and demerits. Let's not talk about that here. But if you talk about Git, Git is actually a distributed version control system. Okay, so the first one distributed, which means everyone will have their own copy, which will have which will have a local repository, and version control means Git will do the version control for you. Okay, uh, is Git that super? Uh, Git is like a Superman who will do everything for you? Uh, not exactly, uh, because you have to as a programmer you have to control that. Okay, Git will help you to do that, but you have to mention you have to use some commands like commit or push. So while doing that, it will maintain those versions. Okay, so that's how Git works. But then, uh, what extra features it provides? Now there's also a concept called as trunk-based development. I don't know if you have heard about this before, but we have a concept of trunk-based development. What it means, uh, let's say if you are working on a project, or maybe if I'm working on a project, maybe an Android project, and that project is built, uh, so it is, it, is, it is in development from a long time, and the current version which we are working is, let's say, 4.7. And 4.7 is a stable version. Everything is perfect, or oh, not everything is perfect. In this world, we have we, we don't have any software which is bug free, right? So there will be some or other bugs available in my system, in my software. That, that version is one, uh, 4.7. And now we are working in a very new feature. And that feature, when it is added to the project, it will be 5.0, right? That's a major version. Now, if you are working on 5.0, and let's say if some, some, some of the users say, hey, there's a bug in your, in your current version, which is 4.7. Now what you will do, will you work on 5, I mean, you're working on 5.0, right? You don't have an old project now. Can you work on two projects simultaneously? And it's possible. What we do is, if you're working on Git, let's say if you have a project here, if you're working on Git, and let's say if you're doing some work, by default, you will be having something called as branch. And that branch will be called as a master branch, okay? So let's say this is your 4.7 version. And you're working here. After some changes, you have done the commit. That means you are pushing your data to the, to the repository, maybe local or, or uh, remote. 
After some changes, again you are doing commit. After some changes, you are doing some commit. Now what is commit? Commit simply means save. Again, we'll talk about commit in detail later. There's, there's a difference between commit and save. But just imagine, uh, we have we are committing it. Now, if you're coming from SQL background, you know what is commit, right? So yeah, so we are we are saying a commit here. But let's say this is your 4.7 version. And now if you're working on 5.0, if you are working on 5.0 on the same branch, what will happen is you lose the original project. Okay, so the best one would be don't work on the same branch. If you are working on 5.0, what you can do is you can just create another branch. That is possible. You can create another branch which will, which will name it as, let's say, uh, new branch. Okay, so it's a new branch. And on this branch, you can have your 5.0. So you, you're coding for 5.0. And after some time, if you feel everything is perfect, and by the time you're working on 5.0, you can still continue work, 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 work with 4.7. Now this is your master, this is the actual one, this is your new branch. And the moment you feel, you know, 5.0 is perfectly working, what you can do is you can push or you can send, you can merge your, you can merge your changes from this branch to the master branch. And it's very easily possible, right? So that's how you work with this system. So we have, a, we have a concept of trunk-based development, right? We are creating branches to make it work. Uh, now what else? So this is your trunk-based development. But then question arises, how will you implement all these things? Uh, we can create our local copy, right? So we can download Git for free. Uh, it is free, first of all, and it is free and open source. Uh, you can download the Git from the internet. If you are using Mac, uh, congrats, you already have Git there. But if you are using Linux, you can install Git as you uh, as we normally install other softwares. We're using Package Manager. Or if you are using Windows, we have Git Bash. Again, I will show you those steps in the in the coming videos. But then question arises: How will you get the remote version? Can I create my own remote repository? That is possible, right? You can buy a server, you can add your Git service there. But do we have to really buy those services? We don't have to actually. We have two different web, in fact, we have multiple implementations. One of them is GitHub, or we can use Bitbucket. Uh, we also have some GUI tools to work with them, uh, like we have SourceTree, we have, uh, we have different softwares. I will, again, we'll talk about that once we start with the series. So I'll be using GitHub for the implementation here, but you can also try your luck on Git, uh, Bitbucket, right? So there are different softwares available. Okay, so what else? So this is the basics of Git, and we'll talk about the lots of features in the coming videos. So I hope you enjoyed this session. More videos are on the way. Thank you so much for watching, and do subscribe.